G'day, welcome back to the channel. Now, I said in my last video, no more talking heads. No one wants to see my ugly mug on their screen all day. So, yeah, I said we'd do some flying. Well, actually, it blew really hard on Sunday, so nobody did any flying. Unfortunate, but hey, that's the way it is. But uh, I want to talk now about what you can do sub-250, because that's the future of the hobby. If, we, uh, if we're not very, very careful, we'll all be flying sub-250, because everything else will be outlawed. Maybe even sub-250 itself will be outlawed. But let's say you want to avoid registering. Because in most countries, sub-250, you don't have to register. In Canada, sub-250, you don't even have to... Have, you, there's no prescriptive rules. Just don't injure people, don't break their stuff. How simple is that? Who could forget those rules? And it seems to be working very well in Canada. I've heard of no injuries, I've heard of no broken stuff. People are following those two guidelines, you might call them. Because remember, rules are for the obedience of fools and the guidance of wise men. So, Let's take a look at what you can do if you're limited to a total mass of no more than 250 grams. Well, if you're flying quadcopters, it's pretty easy. There's now a heap of stuff on the market which is less than 250 grams, like this. This is the little Cine B 4K. Ah, Cine Queen 4K, that's what it is. Cine Queen 4K. I've reviewed this on my RC Model Reviews channel. It's a lovely machine. I've got some fantastic footage out of this. If you're into quads and you want a cinematic look of, you know, to do some really good aerial video, there you go. Of course, if you want to do the sort of camera drone stuff, you've got the Mavic Air, Mavic Mini, which is sub-250. So there you go. If you want to do the traditional drone footage, you've got that as well. So there's this. What else we got? Hey, let's go back a bit. This is a Vifly. This is one I got ages ago. It's fully aerobatic. It actually flies really nicely. It's very light and sub-250 grams with the, uh, the little Fox. I think it's a Fox Air camera. Yeah, it's a Fox Air camera on there. Um, full range receiver. Hey, great. It's a, it's a fantastic little quad. I love this. It just feels so light in the air. It really does handle well. Um, if you want to go a little bit more upmarket, this thing, this is the Beetle Hom, the Transtech Beetle Hom, which originally I wasn't that fussed on, but now I just love this thing. I've got some fantastic follow footage um, on one of my recent videos where I was following that uh, bird of time. Use this thing. Absolutely brilliant. I mean, the, the the quality of the DJI digital system in terms of the image is brilliant. I developed the whole thing on 25 milliwatts and I was chasing this big glider around the sky. The picture was rock solid all the time. This thing handles really well. Got a little bit of shakes actually. I must tune it a bit because it has a little bit of shakes down at low speed but um, when you're following stuff, oh, absolutely fantastic. Under 250 grams and it'll go anywhere and the flight times were really good. I got six minutes out of this admittedly with quite a big battery but Hey, it's still, I don't know if it's under 250 grams with the battery or not. Let me just check. With the recommended um, 650 or 750 milliamps, it's under 250 grams. This might be just over. No, look, 246 grams, and that's with an 850 milliamp battery and an adapter lead because mine's got an XT60. So all that extra weight still doesn't need registration. That's fan bloody testing. Now, you might be thinking, oh, yeah, but what about something smaller? Well, yeah, it just keeps getting better. Look, this is the Emacs. Uh, what is it? The um, Tiny Hawk Freestyle. <laughs> this thing is a blast. I've had so much fun. Look at that. Look in the palm of my hand. And it's just like a full-size quad. It's got fantastic performance. Let's see, in case you didn't see the review or you weren't watching. 53 grams. Okay, that's without a battery. Let's throw a battery on it. 82 grams. Seriously? 81 grams. Now, it's getting lighter all the time. 81 grams. And that's full freestyle micro quad, you know, micro quad really, it, and it is just a blast to fly. Being so small, they bounce off everything. They can't hurt anybody. They can't. It's a choking hazard. It's a choking hazard. It's the only risk to health this thing poses. You can fly that, and once you've got the goggles on, you wouldn't really know it wasn't a much bigger quad. So those people saying, oh, you know, I, these little sub 250s are no good. This is bloody brilliant. It's a fantastic quad. I fly the backside off that thing. And if you want to go even smaller, yeah, because we can go smaller. Honestly, we can. Review on this coming up, Mobula 6, 28 grams, seriously, and that is with the battery, 28 grams with the battery, 27 grams, they all get lighter as, as the day goes on here, 27 grams with the battery, seriously, this is, and this indoors is so much fun, they fly outdoors, indoors is the best place for those, not that good in the wind, but you can bounce it off the furniture, bounce it off the wife, off the cat, you know, bounce it off anything, and it just doesn't break, it just keeps on flying. You get reasonably good flight times with those little one-nose batteries. Don't run them too low, though, because it will reboot the flight controller. Don't ask me how I know, but a full review on this is coming up on RC Model Reviews. So those people who say, well, you know, Sub-250, it's just toys. No, no, this has got a full flight controller in it. It's got 
full 25 milliwatt FPV gear. It's got brushless motors. It's like seriously free sky or fly sky, bind and fly. Fantastic. Uh, look, those are the choices you've got. But now I hear people saying, but I don't like these damn quads, these damn multi rotors, these damn drones. I like to fly real planes that have wings. Well, let's see what we can do for you. Ta-da! In the middle of the mess, it is the Zod Dart 250. Yes, it's called 250 because it's sub 250. And it, I've got to say, wait till you see the review before you buy it, because I've got a few, there's a few negatives about this and, and there's a few things you need to know before you buy it. The review is in progress. I've had to do quite a bit of retakes on the review because I've found out various things, but it flies, it flies. Um, and it is sub 250 grams and it's it's one of you know there's plenty of room in there put a flight controller in it trust me put a flight controller in it um it flies much better with a flight controller uh, but this is the sort of thing that we're looking at now fixed wing and it's it's not that small what is that about um i don't know what the milli what the size of the wingspan is and i've lost the piece of paper that tells me hang on should have a quick rummage around in the rubbish here no i think it's gone forever i must have put it in a safe place i hate it when that happens yeah Oh no, tell a lie. I knew it was here somewhere. It says the Dart Wing Talon. No, I've only got all the other darts. It doesn't have the mini one. Anyway, I don't know what that is. It must be about 400, 500, 400 millimeters, 500 millimeters. Anyway, it's, it's nice and small, small enough to throw in the back of the car. This is really handy because the other benefit of the Sub 250s is that not only are they durable because there's no mass when you have a crash. And trust me, I've had a lot of crashes with this thing while I've been trying to get the bugs out of it. I uh, had a lot of crashes, but look, it's still in tip-top shape. It hasn't fallen apart. And this is the typical Zod, fairly soft, fairly mm, brittle foam. So the low mass makes a huge difference. Um, so yeah, they're not only light and very durable, but they're, they're also easy to transport. You don't have to break it down. You have to pull bits off. You just throw it in the back, throw it in the god box, stick it in your back pocket if you want to. So yeah, this is... Um, Sub 250. Then of course if you're a do-it-yourself kind of guy you can build your own Sub 250. This is the Outlaw 250. Don't, don't hammer on me because I haven't published the build video. It's getting there. Just give me a break. Um, but this foam board Sub 250, brilliant. So much fun. Flies really well. The original prototype I've been sort of dismantling because it's, it's, it still flies but it's getting a bit tattered and worn around the edges. I didn't put tape on the wing so it's, it's getting a bit tatter but for a plane that's had so many encounters with terra firma this thing has just stood up and stood up and stood up so it's again durability and you can i mean this is there's not a lot of work involved in this a little bit of pack, colored packing tape a um, little bit of foam board sharp knife bit of hot glue bingo you're there and you don't have to build this you can build something yourself one of the best parts of this hobby, especially uh, that I enjoyed when I was younger, was just designing stuff and seeing if it would fly. And foam board is so damn cheap, you can have so many failures and it doesn't cost you any more than a coffee. So um, get out there and have a go. Try it out. Give it a, you know, design your own model. Try it. And you can whittle away to make it lighter if it's over 250 grams and you won't have to register it. You won't have to have an electronic ID in there or anything like that. Um, this is what you need to do. Uh, build your own if you can't find one off the shelf that's going to do the job. And there have been sub 250 planes around for ages. Look at this, the Radjet 420. Look at that. How much does that weigh? Come on, let's, let's have a look here. Go scales, go. No blood, let's go. 52 grams. And I've put FPV on this. I've flown this FPV and it's only a few grams more if you use one of the little run cam or any of the little all-in-one FPV cameras. Brilliant. You can FPV the damn thing and it flies really, really well. 52 grams. I mean, these things are fun. I've flown this in a bit of wind as well. So don't let the uh, small size put you off. But, but I hear the nitro flyers out there going, oh yeah, but yeah, yeah but, you know, nitro planes are heavier than that. Nitro planes are heavier. You can't have a sub-250 nitro plane. Well, I'm sorry, but you guys are wrong. Look, here is my nitro little stick. Here we go. And it is, well, let me just try and shift it around a bit so you can see. Oh, need a bigger bench. Actually, I need a tidy bench. Just move all the crap out of the way behind me here. Let's just get it pivoted. Here we go. 121 grams. I, admittedly, that's without fuel, but this only takes a couple of milliliters of fuel, so it's still going to be about 125 grams, half the legal limit. And this is, it's got a Cox motor on the front. It's got radio gear in it. You can see the gear in there. It's got the battery in it. It's got all the servos. It's ready to fly apart from a little bit of fuel. 121 grams. So don't tell me that you can't fly nitro under, under 250. It's just because everything's so small and lightweight now, you can do anything you like under 250 grams virtually. And let's not forget what I think is one of the best elements of the hobby, one of the most fascinating and challenging and rewarding disciplines, and that's gliding. Here we go, look at this, what is this way? 
137 grams. That's my DLG. And it's carbon Kevlar and it's got about a 900 millimeter wingspan. 100, ooh, if I can get it right, just get it balanced. Come on, balance. Well, it's 140 grams depending on how I balance it. 140 grams. Well under the 250 gram maximum for before you have to register. Fantastic. Look, let's look at all the options I've just shown you. So don't say to me, oh, you know, you can't fly anything decent under sub 250. There is so much choice now for sub 250. Absolutely so much choice. We've got five gram servos. We've got two gram servos. We've got one and a half gram servos, receivers that, that are smaller than your fingernail. It's a great challenge. It's a great challenge and a really exciting aspect to the hobby because especially in the winter months, like you've got up north at the moment, you can fly stuff indoors. It's so light and so durable and so low mass, you can fly them indoors. So you're no longer confined by the weather. And with my sub two, with my Outlaw 250, I've flown this in, well not this one, but the prototype flown it in gale force winds virtually, absolutely really strong winds, flew beautifully. Okay, it was bumpy and rough and you got thrown around a bit, but hey, that's part of the fun too. Learning to fly in rough conditions with a lightweight model is another fantastically challenging discipline. It is so much fun. Everyone should try it. It improves your flying skills. And you've got nothing to lose. These things are so cheap to build and so lightweight that you're not going to break it. And even if you do, hot glue, bit of foam board, good as new again. So there you go. That's what I'm telling you about the hobby. That's where it's headed. Uh, if we really want to continue flying, I think the best thing to do, my opinion, this is only my opinion, you'll have one of your own. Yours is just as valuable as mine, so I'm not going to knock you for it. But I think you shouldn't register because there is just a world of choice under 250 grams. Now, if you're in the UK, if you're in the UK and you are uh, going to EASA rules, you're going to have EASA rules as of mid-year, then the 250 gram thing becomes a little bit complicated because under EASA rules, uh, 250 grams, you don't have to register unless it's like that, unless it has a camera on it. Really seriously, after the mid-year this year, you'll have to register that. Honestly, seriously, a child's, no, a choking hazard. You have to register it because it has a camera on it. In fact, I think that's something we'll have to challenge in the courts because the actual rules say data collection device. Now, if you're using goggles that don't have a DVR, that's not a data collection device. You're not collecting the data. It's a live feed and that's it. it once you've watched it, it's gone. It's not collected. So I think things like this, as long as you're using, using goggles without a DVR, I think they shouldn't have to be registered. I would be prepared to challenge that in the courts. And even, even the little Emacs, the, the 80 gram Emacs. Again, unless you're using goggles with a data capture device, any FPV craft should still be free from registration if it's under 250 grams. Because until you actually record that live feed, that is not a data collection device. It is a data relay device, but not a data collection device. I think people should be gearing up now to fight that because that still leaves the hobby free. Even once EASA rules come in in the UK, you'll still be able to fly FPV sub 250 and um, not have to register. Remember, something like this is very capable. This thing here, you, I mean, I expect, if you run with a 2S lithium ion pack, you'll get easily 40 minute, 45 minute flight times out of that. And it's quite a quick little beast when you get it in the air. So massive flight duration, massive flight duration. And, and the beautiful thing is, in Canada, you can even fly that BV loss legally. Legally fly at BV loss. Because in Canada, no prescriptive rules. Just don't hurt people, don't break their stuff. And as long as you're not hurting people or not breaking their stuff, you can fly this BV loss. There's nothing to prohibit you from doing so in Canada. Fantastic. So going under 250 actually opens far more doors than it closes. I really recommend everyone has a close look at it. And I'm going to be doing more reviews of sub-250 stuff because that is... For the time being, it may be where a lot of people have to be headed. Maybe the only option we have. So, yep, there'll be the, uh, this and there's a couple of other. And if you're a manufacturer or a distributor, or retailer or whatever, and you've got a craft that's sub 250, be it a multi-rotor or be it a fixed wing, be it a glider or powered, whatever, get a hold of me. I'd love to review your product. I'd love to show it to all the people who watch these videos and hopefully encourage them to go out there and get really involved in sub 250. There you go. Thanks for watching, folks. In fact, I'll put some flight footage on the end of this if I can find some, <laughs> showing these different craft in action. So you can see for yourself when I'm just not just talking through a hole in my head. I am, um, this is totally true. These things just fly so damn well. So here we go. If I've got flight footage, it's coming up. If I don't, well, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my Patreon supporters. Bye for now.